Welcome to part three of the recording. We will take our completed puppet animation, export it from Character Animator, and import it into Adobe After Effects. So if you're happy with your character animation, let's go ahead and export it. So you go under File, Export, and we want to export the entire scene, not just the video or the audio. I'm going to put this on my desktop, and you're going to give the folder a name. It will export the audio file as well as the still animation frames. It takes a few minutes, so I'm going to stop the recording and come back when it's done exporting. So the export's done, and we can see in the folder that we created, Frank Dodges Ball in my case, that all the still frames for the animation are there, and if I scroll to the end, I also see that the audio file is there. So now let's go and open up Adobe After Effects. I already have a scene that I've started, and I can import the composition that was just exported from Character Animator by going under File. And in this case, we're going to go to Scripts, and there's a script called New Comp from Character Animator Recording. Select that, and then let's go ahead and find the folder where we exported the animation. And all we need to do is select one of the images from the export, and Adobe After Effects will do the rest. So we can see we've got a composition here, uh, Frank Dodges Ball. And if I just play this back quickly, We can see the animations there. So I'm going to go back to my main composition and start to build up the animation. I'm going to drag the soccer ball down into the timeline. And we'll just resize it a bit. So I'm not going to spend a lot of effort in making the animation perfect. I just want to show how you can have your character animator interact with other animations within Adobe After Effects. So let's go ahead and move this over here. And let's get the basic kind of arc in place for the ball. So I'll hit a keyframe for position here. And we'll just go a couple frames out. And we'll move the ball. I'll reposition the animation once I get the rough animation figured out. And we'll have it go like this. And let's just give the ball a bit more of an arc. Let's so lift the ball up a bit. All right, so now what we want to do is get the timing a bit more right. I'm going to just pause the tutorial here and come back with the bit more of a completed animation for you to watch. I finished the animation. I gave the ball a bit of an arc to give it some realism, and I adjusted the scale to make it look like it was going into the background, and I added a bit of rotation to simulate spin. I did my animation, and then I timed it to where Frank dodges his head a little bit here. So let's watch the completed animation. What a great day in the neighborhood. It's beautiful outside, it's sunny, the birds are singing. Whoa, watch out! Whoa! That was so close. So as you can see, it wasn't a very long animation, but if I would have tried to create some of those facial expressions and motion within After Effects, it would have taken a lot of time and a lot of keyframes. By using Adobe Character Animator, I was able to create a complex and somewhat realistic animation with hardly any effort and really not much keyframing going on. So I really encourage you guys to experiment and try using Adobe Character Animator. It's really a great tool from Adobe.